Hello and welcome back to the Dungeons and Dragons Podcast UK. My name is Yasmin and I will be the DM. Hi, my name's Colin and I play Cuin de Greymond, a paladin from Gavany. Hi, I'm Spencer. I play Caddo Chasseur, a cleric also from Gavany. Hi, I'm Brian and I play Ogvar Shawfoot, a ranger from Keswick. Hi, my name is Samantha and I play Elora Greyvale, a sorcerer from Nefalia. After acquiring rooms 7 through 12, Alora and Ogvar attempt to manhandle Arvis to her bunk, and although they had the best of intentions at heart, the stairwell soft shoe shuffle did not go to plan at all. Arvis predictably delivered a vomit comet of epic proportions, which Alora deftly evaded in sparkling style. With Arvis delivered to her dorm, Ogvar revealed his more caring and thoughtful side, before they both left her to sober up and sleep it off. Meanwhile, downstairs, having concluded their business with the bishop, our plucky paladin and chirpy cleric had arrived back at the bar with a new mission in mind. Yes, you've got it. Yet another mahoosive meal. I mean, what is it with these guys? (sighs) Episode 63, Pious Patrols and the Sourcing of Scrolls. Hi everyone, got a touch of housekeeping this week. For anyone who is currently unaware, we will be playing and recording remotely for the foreseeable future, and as such, we would like to apologise that our audio quality is not up to its usual standards. As we go through this interim adjustment period with our tech setup, it will be a number of episodes before we will recover our usual audio clarity. Please bear with us, we will get there, we just need a little time to figure it out and fine tune. Thanks for your understanding everyone. Yeah, so we're going to go and, while they sit down and eat theirs, we're going to decant to go and get ours. Yeah, okay. So as you start moving, you walk towards the, um, towards this kind of uh, carvery section, this this food section. And as you walk there, you meet Pickle pickle coming the opposite way, licking up the trail of gravy. Um, So you go up to your, uh, go up to the window. I take it you're just going to pile your plates high? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Take yeah. advantage of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And when you get up there, this this ball, which was on the racks, on the spinning racks, um, when you get up there, they've actually just replaced the piggy. Um, so you've, there's another ball in there, a new one with like this big, crispy, golden, thick skin um, and this big, red, shiny apple in its mouth, um, proper like suckling, suckling ball. Um, and they've just they're just carving off fresh slices off the back of it um, oh. into the tray below and it's it's hot and it's meaty and it's really really nice um, yeah so you pile your plates up and you go and sit down uh, join the table she looks fantastic well, well I'm still working through it but it's pretty good stuff isn't it hearty fair I'd call it certainly keep me going to uh, tea time of course how was well uh well, we went and got a few bits and pieces. Uh, we went uh, up to see uh, the old bishop, didn't we? Yeah, what did you make? I, I, he was a bit odd, wasn't he? What did you make of him? I, I just He didn't give us a lot. He, he was quite cagey. Yes, he seemed to be uh, trying to tell us something without actually telling us something, which was a bit weird. But it, all he kept talking about was rats in the in the cellar and knowing, knowing who was in charge yeah knowing who their master was and he wouldn't he wouldn't t- really tell us anything about our quest and he, uh, he, he wouldn't give us anything more about Jenrick. When, when you say rats and a master who who's a master of rats well i couldn't work out 
I, I, I was thinking about it as we were walking back. I couldn't work out if he's actually got rats in the basement that he wants me to go and sort out as as part of my rededicating myself to Avsin. Or if, or if it was some sort of allegory for what's going on in general um, in Innistrad. But I, uh, the more I think about it, the more I, uh, I'm coming to the conclusion he, he, he's got intruders in his basement. It, it, it did seem like that. Um, he did well, I tell thought us... you just said it was rats. Well, well, I think yeah. I, I think, mean, rats I in a basement he's... isn't unusual, is it? I think it was a metaphor. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, he so said that he knew. something funny it... going on in his basement. Yeah, he said he knew who was in charge. Well, if it. If it was rats, just normal rats, then surely the person being in charge would be the king rat or the yeah. leader rat. Yeah, but rats don't have a master as such, no. do they? Uh, we, we found out that, uh, you know, that the church isn't all that powerful over here. Uh, That's very curious. And that the uh, Skurstag seem to be behind almost anything that goes uh, a bit wayward. And the, and the decline of the church, and that uh, a, a fellow called Arthur Axim is the uh, current city lord, and he doesn't like the church either. So I think we should go and see what's what's what up there. Um, Sounds and, like that you've got some unfinished business there. Well, yes. I, yeah, I think I think we probably need to go back and have another chat with him at, at, at least. Or um, maybe if you can sober up Esther, she can go with you. She's a woman of the church. Yeah. Maybe she's got some insight on it. Well, it might be worth us all going, just uh, so he can update us on, on anything to, to do with the quest, I suppose. I've, I've, we've got to be in town for another day anyway, because I can't pick up my new armor till tomorrow. It's going to take 24 hours because I'm having it specially made. And I can't pick up my... Uh, so it, it's costing a fortune to get my compass repaired. Um, and I can't pick that up till tomorrow either, so... Ah, uh, that also reminds me, does anybody have a use for a spyglass? Uh, well, certainly I know how to use one. You know how to use a... Oh, OK. Um, we, we picked up a spyglass on the way. Do you, do you, Did you? Where'd you, you find wanna... that? Well, do you, do you want to take... Yeah, that? I'm happy to look after it if, if, nobody, okay, if fine, nobody else uh, knows Paulette, how to use it. Paulette, could, could I also trouble you for that spyglass as well, please? No worries. Oh, there you go. Got it again. I'm getting quite good with this catching business. Um, here you go. Take take this spyglass, and if you can use it, well, that might come in useful, might it? Yeah, so, super. Thank you very much. Um, Laura's going to hand the spyglass. It's only a small spyglass, but she's going to hand the spyglass nevertheless over to um, Caddo. Okay, so Caddo, you take this spyglass, and it is it's quite short, but it's one of those telescopic ones. Um, so. It's probably about the length of your palm, so that that long, about what is that, about five, four or five inches long, um, and it it does pop out. It's telescopic. It's got two kind of telescopic joints on it, um, but it's quite a nicely. Uh, it's it's quite simple, but quite nice. Uh, it's just a a bronze cast spyglass with a bit of kind of uh, kind of almost like rope patterning carved in, looping round it. Brilliant. Okay, I shall add it to my equipment. So you sit down, you have your meal. Um, you're all working your way through the meal. Um, it's very filling. Um, Esther, is, as the meal's gone on, she hasn't taken part in any alcohol with her meal. Uh, but she is, you can see her starting to kind of slow down as she's chewing her way through. She's kind of lost the kind of bubbly energy that she did before the kind of bubbly drunken energy um, and she's now just very focused on her food and just steadily champing her way through how are you doing there esther how's your food oh. going down it's nice isn't it oh it's it's quite good quite lovely yes yeah, maybe it'll soak up that alcohol for you you feeling all right oh i've never felt better um office was a bit of a state might need to look after her a bit better she doesn't hold a drink very well Oh, um, yes, uh, uh low, low tolerance, I think. Yeah, weren't you? There were quite a few empties on the bar. Never mind. We've just shoved mm. her in a room. Oh, excellent. Okay, um, yes. Um, but what, what were we talking about? Um, uh, well, the boys have been up to the church. Um, and there seem to be a few issues with that. I'm, I'm not quite sure how to untangle it, but, um, I'm sure they'll fill you in but it seems to me that there's some kind of uh, the bishop up there had rats in his basement but he was talking about a master I, I don't really understand it 
it sounds like mm. there's one or two issues up there that I need looking at. I, I, I'd say that's probably not rats then. No, probably not. But I'm not quite sure what it is because, well, we weren't there, so. Oh, yes. well. Might be worth another visit up there, though. Have you met the bishop before, Esther? Uh, no, I haven't met the bishop before. No, I mean it was, I was very young when I came down to um, so off. Um, uh, so so yes, I I mean I, I've heard of him, um, uh, Bishop Herman, um, but I I've never actually met met the man. Yeah, he was he was a bit. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with enigmatic, Ewan. Would you agree? Yes, I would. Uh, it, 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 very bubbly, like yourself, or you know, a bit. Uh, he was holding things back. I believe on purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, spoken riddles, and it just wasn't very forthcoming at all. Which, considering we gave him, we gave him our collection and uh, 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 with with some extras as well you'd think he'd be a little bit more um, forthcoming but anyway i've got to pop back tomorrow anyway well um yes sir i'll, I'll accompany you brilliant right well it's been a long it's been a long trip on the road isn't it guys i reckon probably a decent night's rest well you some know study. considering it's only like lunchtime yeah um, well, some study and some um Bearing in mind that Alora has, um, she wants to go back out into town and see if she can find out anything. Actually, no, she's going to go to the bar and speak to the barman. Um, so she's going to push a plate. When she's finished that, she's going to go up to the bar and speak to the bar. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Hello. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hi. I wonder if you could tell me. Um, would you? Would you possibly have anywhere in town? Um, I mean, Janelle has like a uh, some evening entertainment, should we say, if you know what I mean. Is, is there any evening entertainment here? In um, well, we we do have um, we have comedy nights in the bar. Uh, we have the occasional line dance. Um, <laughs> uh, we have... I, I was kind of. I'm sorry to cut in. That's not the kind of thing I meant. I meant, do you have like a, well, do you have a, anywhere that locals might gather, like merchants and things, you know, to perhaps sell slightly more spurious things or, you know? Well, um, there's, uh, there's, a number maybe, of, or? There's, there's a number of establishments in town. There's um, a casino by the waterfront. Um, but I do believe that you'll find... Um, that the ladder maintenance is is required in the well behind the guild. Ah, uh, right. Ah, uh. we do have other things. I mean, we have karaoke night. That's every you know third day, of the month. Okay. Um. Uh, so yes, there's this, madam. There's there's all sorts of various forms of entertainment in town. Have you any idea what kind of I'm? You might need some help with the ladder maintenance. <laughs> well, um, any time is, um, you know, um, it's if you. I mean, you can you can undertake maintenance on the ladder at any time. Um, oh. However, evening time, uh, roughly after six o'clock, that's when things start to go. Um, you know, the lights are the best for it. Ah, oh, marvelous. Uh, well. I'll be thanking you for that then. That's that's some useful information. Thank you very much for your help. Um, with that, um, Laura's going to go back to the table. She's going to say to the others, uh, there's a couple of things I needed to pick up in town um, that I didn't get while I was out this morning. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go out and get those myself. It's, it won't take me long, so I'll be all right with that. Um, uh, a- apparently... Um, uh, you know the little bit of fun we had at the underground arena in uh, Genoa? Uh, there's something similar here I've discovered in Selhof, as we were told. Um, apparently, um, apparently, behind the guild, behind the guild, there's a well. Apparently, he said that 
that there's ladder maintenance in the well. Best time is probably after 6 p.m. Why, why, why are we think that? I, I think it's a bit of a, it's just a bit of a hint of that, because it's a bit of a delicate question to ask in case anybody overhears. Everybody knows it's there, but nobody ever really speaks about these things. You like the underground market? That's, yeah, oh. that's what I mean. I, I did try to be a little bit subtle, you know. Oh god, really? sort of touched okay. the side of his nose. And... Just to hit me over the head with it. Ah, yes. Uh, you got your visor fixed yet? Uh, actually, no. I, well, uh, I'm gonna... for, I, 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 I didn't have it with me. So. Well, I'm going to pop out into town. There's a couple of little things I just need, so I'm not going to be too long. Um, so I'll leave you boys to do what you want to do, and I'll be back. Ogvar's going to go out with Alora. While I'm out in the city, there's a couple of things that I would like to get. Because she's spent, now she's chewed up her owl feather. Um, she wants to get a replacement owl feather from an apothecary store. And um, can she, she's just going to get the um, pearl out from Orland as well and just have a look at it. Um, is that pearl worth 100 gold pieces? No, it's, it's not worth 100 gold pieces. When you look at the pearl, you can tell it's very dull in colour, um, it's not that shiny, um, it's quite small, it's a little mis, uh, little misshapen, it's it's not worth a hundred gold pieces, no. Okay, um, she's going to, um, yeah, she would like to acquire an owl feather and an extra pearl worth a hundred gold pieces. Can, okay. would, she, would she be able to find an, a scroll of identify to replace the one that she's just used? Right, so the owl feather and the um, the pearl, you'll yep. be able to replace those easy and easy enough. Um, so yeah, you can just knock the prices off for those. It's identify, however. Um, How much for an owl feather? What is it? Just like uh, okay, scrolls. Hang on, let me find the scroll section. I assume owl feathers aren't they expensive? Yeah. Owl feathers. Well, no, the, the, have you got a um, spellcasting component pouch? Yes, so that would come from there. Or have you got a focus? Not a forward focus, a spell focus. <laughs> <laughs> um, beep, beep. No, because, um, no, it's it's an eight. My casting's an eight, isn't it? Right. But I would, I would have a component pouch. I, I would yeah, have so one, yeah. The owl feather would come out the component pouch because it's a non-specified value. Okay, so no, when you use that pearl up and the owl feather earlier, you didn't need to. You don't need to use components when you're casting a spell off a scroll. You just read the scroll. You just oh, read the I scroll. It was. It's right. So I've got a thing that says identify scroll here, and then the information. Yeah, I think you've probably just read out spell. read out the spell rather than the item. So what you've got there is the spell information. It says arcane material. Oh, it's all right. It just actually does say identify scroll. Yeah, but I think what you've probably done is you've scroll. written down, I've got an identify scroll and just copied out the spell because that's what it does. No, it says identify yeah, scroll. But, yeah, but who who wrote that? That's off the internet. That's 3.5. Yeah, and what they've done... At the player's handbook. Yeah, so what they've done is just written what the spell effect is. The details of the spell underneath the scroll. I think with any scroll, you just have to read it. Right, okay, so... You can probably find an identify scroll. Yeah. Um, so. But you can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to add the hundred back on. So she's gonna hang on, hang that on. then. Hang on. That's right. On. Roll me a percentile. One to. Th okay. Roll me a percentile, and I want you to you to tell me what you get. Obviously. Eighty-five. Okay, that's quite good. Yeah, wrong. Okay, so wrong. Okay, so it's that one. Okay, so then um, roll me a d6. Four. Okay. Uh, and then roll me another percentile. She doesn't need any of this. She's just doing it for shits and giggles. Thirty-seven. <laughs> Tactics. Yeah. <laughs> 37. 37. Okay. Okay, no, so identify slightly easier because it doesn't rely on the
the spell level because you're just casting identify. So it's slightly easier in that sense. Um, so, okay, yeah, you can find a identify scroll. Um, it's going to cost you 150 gold pieces. Okay. Well, that's not as bad as I thought it was. Right, so Alora is going to replace the scroll of identify that she's just used up. She wants to replace that because it was in uh, party loot, but she's tried to use it for a good purpose, but she wants to leave one there. Okay, so you've replaced, you've replaced your scroll. Um, right. Incidentally, if you do not want to replace your pearl, because you technically didn't need to use the pearl or the owl feather or the wine to cast off for that scroll, because scrolls don't have material casting cost. Right, I've just said so, what I've done. Yeah. Yeah. I've so just if you put don't 100 want... back on. Okay, cool. Scrap the pearl idea. Right, okay, cool. So, um, you've gone out and done that. Is anybody else doing anything in the meantime? I was going to go out and see if I can get my... Uh... Sorry, I'll pick to tomorrow when he goes and picks his armour up. I'm going to get me fucking fixed. Yeah, yeah, while we're doing pickups. We'll do okay. that on the way to the fish. <clears throat> I'll just out for a walk. Okay, so Ogwell, you're going for a walk around the city. With a lorry, I just... Company With a really. Okay, is anybody else doing anything, or are you going to go with them? Uh, uh, I'll go um, uh, with Ogva. Yeah, have a look, quick look around. Yeah. Spencer, you go. Uh, I'll probably do my own thing. I'll probably take Pickle for a bit of a walk in the in the afternoon sunshine. More, well, I say the afternoon sunshine. The afternoon in a uh, heavy cloud, um, uh, and uh, I, I might uh, uh, treat myself to afternoon tea. Very civilized. While they're out, uh, but yeah, I'm just going to recoup and rest my bones after a few weeks on a wagon. Okay, so Esther's going to go with um, with the majority of the group. Uh, so if you go with. Laura, Ogvar, and Kewin. She's going to try and walk off the alcohol. Um, okay, so you're probably out for half an hour finding a scroll for Laura. Yeah, uh, she doesn't want to do anything else. That's all she wants to do is just replace what she's what she's used. Okay. Um, so you've gone around. You've had a walk. You've seen some of the sites around Selhof, mostly. Um, Kind of the the shopping region, uh, so shopping area. There's quite a lot of shops, um, quite a few shops selling magical trinkets and magical items, uh, various kind of scrolls, wands, that kind of thing. Okay, um, what are you doing after? So, what are you doing at the afternoon? So, it's probably going to take you to about half one ish. Uh, are you doing anything else with your time, or are you just going to? What? While I'm out with my walk with Pickle, I, I just, I sort, of, like any good uh, man of the cloth, I'll, I will speak kindly to the locals and just pick up if there's any feelings about uh, the Lord of the city, uh, the Bish, the state of the church, the general feeling okay. in the town about how Innistrad is. Right. So you can make me a gather information check if you're actually going looking for information. Oh, excellent. Oh, yeah, oh, look, oh, I've got one of those. Uh, that'd be 19, all in. Okay. So, with a 19, speaking to some of the locals, you speak to, it's, it's mostly the older folk you speak to, perhaps people you think who've been around for a while and seen some changes within the city. Um... The younger, the younger kind of people tend to kind of just brush you off or not really listen to you or not really like, pay attention. Um, so, when you speak to these older people, you engage them in some idle chatter. And some of these older, most of these older people, they are quite devout. They believe in Avacyn, they believe in Avacyn's light. Um, and seeing that you're a man of the cloth, they, you know, they speak kindly to you, they interact very positively with you. Um, and you get a sense from some of them that although the church is well liked, you hear some comments like, Oh, hello dearie, it's quite unusual to see a man of the cloth round nowadays. 
that kind of thing. So you do get the general sense from them that perhaps the church's power is waning. Um, it's not people the, the priests are not so prevalent anymore. It's quite rare to see a priest on their own. Um, you also get the sense that a lot of so way you're walking, you've kind of you've probably done a bit of a loop around, so you've gone around by the docks as well. Um, where you've kind of gone around some of the less affluent areas, should we say? Um, possibly some of the people you've interacted with or conversations you have overheard while going through. Uh, you've heard quite a bit about you know strange happenings within the town, within the city, um, crime rate going up. Um, people being very worried, not going out at night, that kind of thing. Um, so you do get a sense that, you know, the, the church doesn't have as much power. Uh, things are going very, uh, well, more, there's like kind of more crime rate or there's more kind of things going wrong at, in the city. Um, so yeah, you just get that kind of overall picture and not a lot is said about the city lord. And the couple of people you do say, oh, what do you think of the city lord to, or, or in whatever manner, they tend to skirt around the topic. Okay. Uh, while I'm down by the docks, I will, um, or as we go past the uh, uh, the butcher's area of market, I will um, I'll pick pickle up a bone. Yeah. It's probably only going to cost you a copper piece for a decent sized bone. Excellent. Okay. Give him something to chew on tonight. Okay, so by the time you all kind of reconvene at the guild, it is about half past one. Um, what are you doing? Uh, Laura's just going to sit and write in a journal. Just bring things up to date. Okay. And she'll just have a... have a mead or something, and then she'll see what... Um, she's going to see what Owen's doing. If he's still in his pouch or... Yeah, you haven't seen Bowen, and when you take a look, he's snoozing away little bat snores in his pouch. Oh, she's going to give him a little tickle and then just shut the top of the pouch again. Yeah, he squeaks at you in a rather confused manner before you shut the top. Okay, Rowan, it's all right. Carry on. You snooze. Back at the guild, having your mead. Back at the guild, having my mead. If everybody's back, I'll um I'll update them on what I found out on my wanderings. Okay. So you share the information around. So yeah, uh, Cadot, do you think it might be that church is losing some influence over the people down around here, in these parts? Well, it seems so. So well, in this town at least. Um, I mean, I didn't I didn't pick up on that anywhere else we've been, but certainly in this town, people seem to be losing their faith in the church. Um, particular they're, reason why they're very cagey about the city lord as well they don't have much to say about him um, did you get any feelings about the uh, lord from the, uh, the bishop earlier no he, he didn't want to talk about him either he, he mentioned that his son has quite a lot of influence over him but that was about it wasn't it q and he didn't say much else he'd say that uh, he was he was quite old when he had his son and that he, it, it, things started to change uh Basically, uh, once his son started to grow and all this lot, and that he started to, he, he was a very a, a, a people person before, but now he seems to be a me, 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 me person. I, he takes, uh, seems to be uh, hoarding more and more power to himself. Then What's this bloke's on. name? It, yeah, his, 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 his name's Arthur Axim. Arthur Axum. Oh. And he's he's the son. It's the son. And and, and things but well, it's saying that the uh the uh the son was bought and he, he took things started to go away from the church. So where's his older. where's his father then? He's dead. Oh. Oh okay. So he's no. so he's taken over from his father. Oh right. so, and, and things have gone steeply downhill since uh I, Um so yes, but uh, we just need to find out. What, you know, apparently, uh, you know, crime gets worse, and you know, 
since this uh, Arthur Axim seems to be uh, very self-centered and very anti-church. Very oh. anti everything The feeling is the city's in decline, be it spiritually uh, and morally. So, do you reckon this guy has sort of got his fingers in the pot or, or what? Well, I don't know whether he's got his the fingers in the pot or he owns the pot, you know. It's, oh. uh, the bishop The bishop didn't want to say too much about it. I don't know if the bishop's scared of him or not. But, but, oh, do you think you can get more information out of him? Well, that's why we're going back tomorrow. That's why oh. we yeah. said we'd all go up. I think it's know. worth us all going, just, it, it, just in case he needs some help from us. Um, I think probably a little bit of a show of force might um, might reassure him a little. Because you can't, you know, we, I know we've got this uh, quest to uh, find the object and go to Jemrick's Tower, but uh, can't really leave uh, a, a, a town in a, a bad state, as well as the bishop, you know, because he's, you know... Well, we can't fix everything, Kieran, but you could go back and make some further inquiries, I agree. Yeah, we could all go, yes, you know. Well, and we've got to come, I, I assume, looking at the map, we're, we're going to be coming back through here after Generic's Tower. Um, uh, we, we, we don't want to come back to a place in disarray. Um, it well, make life I, much more difficult. Well, I, hadn't, well, I hadn't really looked that far on the map, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it's, it's, is that right? It, we got, well... Yeah, I suppose. Uh, Laura's going to pull. Has, she, has Laura got a copy of this map? We all have. Um, yeah, you all have maps. Uh, so Laura's going to pull the map out and have a put down on the table while she's drinking a mead and just study the map a bit and see how in relation to where they've got to get. We, we, we've got to, you know, we've got to make our way over towards Kessig after this, and that that's a long journey across. Kessig's, you know, that's a fair jaunt. Well, that's why we've got horses and a wagon. Yeah. So I know. I, I just. I mean, I don't think we know our I route, do we? Across, across, across the continent until we've seen Jenrick. I keep saying until we've seen Jenrick. Uh, uh, does do we know if the wizard's actually in residence? Oh, I don't know. We were just told to go to his tower. We would just go. Well, if it's his tower, I'm guessing that he. Wizards tend to be. Well. Depends on if he's got it. If he's got his own tower, then he's probably got a bit of money. He's got a bit of status from just from the impression that I got when he was mentioned. Uh, I don't know. They tend to, if he's a high-level wizard, they do tend to hole up in their own area, mm. not mix too much with other people. So they, you know. It's just nobody's actually mentioned he's in residence, have they? But I, I'm assuming that he'll, he'll be there. I mean, we're not going to find out a lot. Well, if they he's seem not. to indicate that that's where we'd find him. So yeah. I'm guessing. But, but just looking at the map, but whichever way we go to get across to Keswick, whether we go sort of north around the mountains or south around the mountains and and, and, and south of the, of the lake, either way, we kind of have to come back through here first, I think. And I'd like to come back to somewhere that's reasonably friendly. Well, I mean, we've got to go. It's a fair, you know, Gatstaff is, is a, a fair way across, isn't it? Uh, it's not all the way across, but it's 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 a long way. It's like two thirds of the way across Innistrad, really. That's that's a big journey. Um, yeah. Yeah, sure is. Slightly like topic. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, anyway. <laughs> I was just well getting at so, the map. You know, it's so like, looked, so the, qu the question is, is, do we want to go and help fix the well in a bit? I think we should definitely go and fix the well. This. I would like to see if an old acquaintance might actually be there. Oh, excellent. OK. Um, and then, uh, uh, like we say, we've got a few bits and bobs to pick up in the morning, but I think there's probably, I think, a, a, vi on. a visit for all of us to the Bish. Yeah. So what, we're planning to stay like a day or two and then... Well, let's see how it goes with the Bish. Yeah, OK. All right, then. And what is this Bishop's name? Gerhard Herman. Gerhard Herman. Gerhard Herman, right, OK, yeah. OK. Right. You can't miss him, he's um, got very big eyebrows. Well, you know what, guys? Um, I'm going to finish up this mead. I'm going to go and take a lie down for a short while. Uh, I'm going to go up to my room and then uh, I'll, I'll come down here for about seven. I'll be down back back down here for about seven o'clock this evening. Uh, if you want to meet up in the bar about seven and then we'll go and... I thought, I thought you said they needed us at the well at six. 
Did I misunderstand? No, no. It, 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 it's the well gets busy. All oh, right, okay. After six. Is it? All oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people fixing the ladder in the well. Like any good party, you don't want to get to the well fixing early. Okay, understood. No. no. I'll go in there, uh, fix my armor. Uh, I'm sharpening up the old uh, the maintenance tools. We say, and uh, let's make sure we're all fit and healthy. Wash. Uh, Aren't you? If I don't, Pitts might give me a bit of an advantage. Space around you, yeah. Yeah, you lot maintain a well very differently to the way I maintain a well. <sighs> yeah. Right. On that note, she's gonna finish a drink, stand up, push a chair back, and whatnot, and she's gonna. In a room, find her, and then she's going to go up to a room. Come on, Orlan. Let's. Do you want to check in on Arvis on the way past? Oh, I'll check on Arvis on my way past you. Which is what she's going to do. She's going to make her way to the stairs. Um, hopefully, they've dried out a bit now. It's been a couple of hours. Um, and uh, she's going to make yep. her stairs. And she's going to, as she passes room number seven, is going to knock on the door softly. Yep. Is there any. From inside, you hear a bit of a. Uh, I'll stick to her and say, Arvis, it's, it's Laura. Is there anything I could do for you? No. Okay. Listen, if I were you, I'd drag yourself in, get yourself washed up and more comfortable, and then just try and sleep it off, yeah? Uh, okay. Well, um, Esther's in the room next door. We're up the corridor, okay? Yeah, you, you see her kind of twitch a bit, but she's kind of bundled herself up under a blanket. Okay. Um, Laura's just going to turn on her heels, quietly shut the door and just leave her to it. At least she's still breathing. <laughs> Choked okay. on her own vomit. <laughs> <laughs> so, are the rest of you just doing um, kind of resting activities until 7 o'clock, are you? Uh, yeah. I'm going to look at everybody and go, uh, uh, let's have this is, uh, pack there. Uh, don't really, if we should leave it down here, I'll, I'll put it in my room and lock it in there. At least it will be safe. Pick it up with me. Join you, proving it more than trustworthy. I'm going to go for it. You never know what they got in there. Poor lady's handbag. Oh, no, no very no, dangerous. No, 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 very no, no, dangerous. No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, we could have put it in uh, Orland, but, you know. Bag in a bag. Bag in a bag, yes. But as long as it's not a uh, a special bag into a special bag, it's all right, as long as it's, you know. But, uh, well, we yeah, don't know I'm... if it's a special bag or not, do we? Well, that's very true. Yeah, that's a good job. We didn't try, really. I'll just take it up and put it in the wardrobe, you know. So I'm going to go up to the room, get all my stuff, and I'm just going to throw a pack at the bottom of my wardrobe as I sort out my stuff. Um, have a little wash my face and uh, sharpen my brand new swords and just grease and oil my armour and have another little go at tightening my, my okay, helmet. Say myself then. <laughs> you <laughs> have a good oiling up. <laughs> I'm going to have another little go at my uh, helmet, see if I can... <laughs> he is oiling himself up. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. The life I'm of the paladin. Do my helmet again. <sighs> okay. See if you get a nice shine, fella. Um. So you can make me a craft armor check. Yeah, nineteen. Ah, right. Okay. Um. Yeah. I mean, you tighten it up and. Uh, I mean, you you really tighten it up. Esther's going to go up. She's going to flop onto a bed. She's just, you know, going to rest for a bit, trying to sleep off the alcohol. Um, Caddo and Ogva, are you doing anything special? Or are you just kind of doing the same kind of resting activities? Yeah, yeah. yeah rest. Take a long rest. Get, Maybe just get up to the room, give Pickle his bone. Yeah, a bit of a play with Ogva. Flick things across the table at him, see if he can pick them up and bring them back across. Okay. Stuff yeah. like that, really. Yeah, I mean, actually, um, oh, well, you can make me a perform check. Perform check? Perform check, yeah. New thing. There you go, teaching your bird tricks. Oh, well, 
Well done, minus one straight away. Uh, that'll be a two all in then. <laughs> <laughs> and the bird fell off the table. <laughs> okay. No, so you just um, you just kind of have a bit of a play with Murdoch. You're flicking bits across the table. He's bringing them back to you. Um, it has the perform check had nothing to do with. Um, Murdoch's performance it was more whether anyone was going to tip you for the entertaining show um, <laughs> nobody does um, okay so yeah and a couple of hours go by like that and soon enough it's seven o'clock with their plates piled high the party took into a tasty meal what followed was yet another trip out, with almost all of the companions together this time. Caddo wandered off for a walk with Pickle, whilst a replacement scroll was sourced by our sassy sorceress. Upon their return to the guild, Alora attempted to discreetly inquire as to the whereabouts of some similar entertainment that they had discovered in Drunau. Rest and recuperation, the polishing of possessions and the pampering of pets whittled away the remainder of daylight. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Having you as a listener means everything to us. So, whichever streaming service you choose to listen to us with, please give us a like, subscribe and follow. We would love for you to join us on our Facebook or Twitter page, where you can catch up with all of our latest news. While you're waiting for the next episode of Secrets of the Silver City, why not pop over to our website, where you can read all of the information about this campaign from backstories to setting. All of the links are in the bio of this episode. Join us again next week for the next instalment. Thank you for listening.